Welcome, welcome to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis, where every day I aim to bring you the latest in UFO reports and other fascinating stories from around the globe. Today is Thursday, February 1st, 2018. Time has really flown this year. And I want you guys to also check out my show that comes on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for The Outlander Show, where I answer your emails, take your calls, and interview some intriguing guests. Just go to irnchat.com to chat, interact, and listen live to The Outlander Show. Blasting off with UFO reports. A sighting in Pine Lake, Alberta. This is a UFO blast from the past, but not too far. This is August 28th, 2012. In brief, the witness states, red orbs that came close to me. I was at Pine Lake Leisure Club in Pine Lake, Alberta, and I was flying my RC plane with red lights in a field close to the campground, making people in the campground think it was a UFO. Then a couple of minutes into my flight, I seen a light come down out of the clouds to the west of me, at least a couple of kilometers away. And then it started to come in my direction. I thought it was a small plane coming to see what my plane was, as that has happened before. But the closer it came, I could see it was a red pulsing orb of light. It came to a couple hundred feet away and then turned to the south and almost stopped. Then I noticed two more that seemed to come out of nowhere. I was having a hard time to keep my plane in the air and watch them. And I was getting very scared by then. So I landed it as fast as I could. Well, now you see how you scare people with your plane, making them think it's a UFO. Hello. Ah, payback. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> These things change direction and altitude at free will. I started to run across the field as fast as I could back to the car, and as I did, two of them slowly followed me right to the car, maybe 100 to 200 feet above me. I seen approximately 8 to 12 of them. I was pretty shaken up. I drove back through the campground to our cabin. I ran into the cabin to tell my friend what I'd seen. She then told me she was videotaping me and got three of them on video. I went back outside to her and a few more flew right over the cabin. She took another short video of one she was able to focus on. I then took a couple of pictures of them that seemed to only be a couple hundred feet above me at most. In the video and looking at them, they look like red orbs, but when you zoom in on my pictures, you can clearly see they are two different shapes, and they don't even look red. One was almost tube shape. Another was kind of round with almost what looks like a tail. They were following me for sure. Some flew back up into the sky, and some seemed to go to the southeast before going out of sight. I was pretty scared and in shock of what just happened. I have both videos on YouTube, but my pictures I have show different shapes that you couldn't see by the naked eye or in video. I also saw one red orb in Fort Sask, Alberta, just last two years, while flying at night again, but it was only me, only one, but it never came as close. It's seen in my plane and then flew off in the same direction it came. Wasn't that interesting? Never heard of drones atta attracting, <laughs> attracting uh, UFOs. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. The next UFO sighting. This happened in Great Falls, Montana. This occurred January 24th, 2018. Black shape sphere, like over a half acre in size by Air Force security police who were two miles away. <clears throat> Contact at OC Mel Melmstrom Air Force Base just reported that another sighting has just occurred over a launch site, causing power outage for 10 minutes. Object described as over a half 
acre in size, described only as black. If contacted, Malmstrom Air Force Base will confirm power outage, but nothing more. Investigators are on their way. Last sighting was in May 2017. This source is reliable and confirmed as I am. Retired police detective, not given to exaggerations. Okay, wow. That was a little hard to read. I just read the stuff. I don't edit it. Whew, okay, this next one. Oh, this is a UFO blast from the past. Black Triangle sighting in Escalon, California. This occurred October 1st, 2004. Large black triangle hovered directly above. Three burners lit. Object ascended, then zigzagged across the sky, out of sight. I was at work, covering the night shift at a residential care facility in a somewhat rural area. At around 10 p.m., I stepped out back for a smoke break. <laughs> there goes another smoker. I had the handset to the facility landline in my front pocket and was talking on my cell phone when I exited the building. I noticed right away that the night sky was unusually black, as if the stars had been blotted out. The night was clear and cool. I looked up in time to see what I believe were three rocket burners light up almost simultaneously. The object having these red, orangish, fiery lights ascended. It did not climb. It went straight up high in the sky. Then it zigzagged across the sky toward the north and was out of sight. I stood there stunned. My heart was pounding. I must have held my breath because I had to gasp for air. I didn't believe in UFOs or any such thing. <laughs> now I'm not so sure. I realized that my cell phone stopped working when I tried to find the words to tell what I had just seen. Just then, my stepfather and administrator of the care home arrived in the parking lot, concerned because he couldn't reach me by either of the phones. This is when I discovered my cell phone, an LG Shine AT&T, was toast. When I told my stepfather I had just seen a UFO, two jets tore across the sky. He said, yeah. There go the military planes. I laughed. The planes were so low, for one. Second, they were going the wrong direction. One question I see almost every time I'm considering reporting this event is, were there any fighter jets or military planes in the vicinity at the time? If those planes I saw that night had any connection to the object I saw, I can think of none, but I mention it here because just in case such detail is relevant. Oh, it's relevant. <laughs> if the pair of jets was supposed to escort the triangle or chase it, that's just comical. <laughs> oh, I love the innocence of some of these reports. This thing was not a blimp, and it had to have been unmanned. Otherwise, the vehicle and any living beings should have been destroyed by the way the thing moved. One other thing, it made no sound whatsoever. The next UFO sighting happened in Lake Huntington, New York on September 30th, 2017, out photographing with students when captured a UFO in the sky. In more detail, the witness states, during digital photography class in high school, at around 10 a.m., me and approximately 15 students were let outside to take pictures of anything they pleased. I decided to snap around five pictures of our school flag in the wind, hoping to capture a good photo. Upon returning to class, a strange object appeared in photo number three. However, the object was not visible in the images, taking half seconds before and after. Never noticed anything in the sky while taking these photos, total of five pictures were taken in a three-second burst. This object only appears in one. The mystery deepens. <laughs> this next UFO sighting comes from St. John's, Newfoundland and Lab. This occurred July 10th, 2017. In brief, 
clearly visible and identifiable flying saucer shaped craft against a bright blue sky in the middle of the day. In more detail, I was driving west along a Thurborn Road, St. John's, Newfoundland, when I saw something out of the corner of my eye on the left. It was clearly an icon saucer shape with a dome on top and slightly dome shaped on the lower half. It hovered completely stationary for approximately 30 seconds before disappearing into thin air. It winked out rather than flying away. I felt weird. I was thinking, why aren't other cars stopping to look at this at the same time? There's no reason to find this odd. I watched it for the whole time, but it didn't waver, and it was a windy day. If it had been small, it would have been unstable in the air. This craft was not wobbling at all. It did not move in any direction, just hovered in the air. I could clearly see that it was a saucer with windows and the sun was reflecting off the right side of it. It was large enough in my field of view that it was sure, I was sure of what I saw. It could not have been a drone shaped like a UFO saucer because it was not affected by the wind and it disappeared without flying away. I drove away and my mind was telling me that there was nothing strange about seeing the craft. Huh? I didn't even tell anyone until much later that day. I feel that my mind was manipulated in some way. Another woman I know saw the same craft from her description in a different area of town on the same day. Oh, that's cool to get validation. Well, isn't that fascinating? I felt that their mind was manipulated like nothing to see here. It's like an Obi-Wan move. You just wave your hand. Nothing to see here. Move on. Nothing to see here. Move on. Uh, okay. Oh, the ways of the Jedi. All right, here we go. <laughs> The next UFO sighting, Black Triangle sighting, oh boy, in Droitwich Spa, England. This occurred January 24th, 2018. 50 to 100 foot Black Triangle craft came silently overhead. In more detail, I was traveling from the Swan Pub at the top of the lane. <laughs> Just... So many people try to let these reports first be known that they weren't drinking or anything and, and this person in England. So I just came from the pub. <laughs> okay, continuing from the Swan Pub at the top of the lane as I started down the lane towards the Cop Cut Pub. Oh, well, they know where all the pubs are. I noticed a white static light come over the treetops and over the top of my car. Thinking it was a shooting star, I looked up to see a triangle jet black craft going overhead. A light was at each corner. Its length was that of a large plane. I thought it was one, so I wound the window down to hear no engine noises as it passed quietly overhead. I slowed to watch it move at speed about 100 feet up in a straight line heading to any heading away towards Redditch, <laughs> sorry, only seeing the rear corner light as it went. The others were not visible. I clearly saw the shape of its body was dense black to blend in with the darkness, but the city lights showed its shape as if it kept away from our town, traveling across country in the dark. You know, you often hear these, these are black triangles and they're so stealthy. Oh, hold on. Sounds like the stealth plane, doesn't it? But I don't think it is. Or pff, maybe it is. Who knows? Who knows what our government's got their little rotten paws on? Hmm, and back engineered something. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. All right. Moving on. UFO sighting in Gainesville, Florida. This occurred January 24th, 2018. In brief, the witness states it looked jagged and spiky hovered and moved around like a leaf until translucent at last night. Okay. <laughs> I don't edit it. <laughs> In more detail, I was driving down in Gainesville, Alawicha County, and spotted 
Attention shoppers, clean up on aisle 14. Clean up on aisle 14. Someone dropped a jar of pickles. 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 Beatboxing at a big box store. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. A red minivan has the lights on in the parking lot. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Geico. A UFO. The craft was white and reflective. It had jagged and spiky edges everywhere. Well, sounds like somebody got their own touches added to their ride. <laughs> I've never seen or heard of any type of aircraft that looked like this. It was hovering, moving around like a leaf. So bizarre, I couldn't help but spot it. I did not have any explanation but to believe it is either A, unearthly technology, B, secret government technology, after I saw it, there was a black helicopter. Something that I'd imagine a government would use. And it flew as fast as it could, like it was in search of that thing. Mm. Well, I, I guess the Pentagon hasn't stopped their program. Mm? What? <laughs> I also saw another lighter colored helicopter doing the same. I don't think a helicopter is going to catch up with a UFO. Uh, the last I saw the UFO, it turned translucent and hard to look at. It made a pinkish red hue and it was gone. I wasn't looking for a second. Look back and it wasn't there anywhere to be seen. After that, I saw at least five drone-like airplanes flying in different directions. They were incredibly tiny. No one could fit in it. They left no trail. To take a step back before I saw it, I finished school and walked to my car. When I went outside, I felt really uneasy and off, like something was wrong. When I saw the UFO, I was just astounded. Isn't that interesting how people see and feel and witness these things? Like something is just weird, they feel nervous, they feel scared, they feel anxiety, pressure, and, and they don't know where it's coming from, or they feel like they're being watched. And then a UFO shows up, or an alien. It's like that predatory fear that animals just have that sixth sense, like, somebody's hunting me, <laughs> something's coming. You know, it's like we have this thing in us that just tells us, no, mm, no, nope, nope. something out of the ordinary is happening. So common, so common. And I think witnesses are almost <laughs> almost as equally shocked that they had that, that sixth sense prior to a UFO thing. Like, which one was more shocking to them? The sixth sense is screaming at them or the UFO being seen? It, it really kind of feels even. It's just kind of kind of fascinating. Very, very cool. All right, we're going to hop on to a paranormal point of a story. How about that? Because these are some cool, creepy ones I've come across lately, and I've been just digging them. I hope you guys do, too. All right, moving forward. This story told by a witness, I'm assuming, is called My Last Fishing Trip. Like, I'm done. <laughs> Oh, this didn't happen to them. This happened to somebody else. Okay, this is them saying, This happened to my Aunt Donna, my brother Eric and I, one late summer day. I have to say this, since this happened, we have not been back to this place fishing. It was summer, school was out, and Eric and I were bored out of our minds. Our parents had divorced, and at the time, we were living with our grandmother and Aunt Donna. We loved living with them because we always got our way. Oh, that's great. You're not spoiled. Uh, <laughs> we were outside moping around when Eric says that he thinks going fishing would be a good idea right now. I smile and say, okay, let's go ask Donna to go. So we find her, tell her our idea, and she agrees. Fishing would be a great idea, and that night we would come back and have a fish fry outside. Ooh, sounds good. We run together all our things, and Donna helps us load it all into the four-wheeler. I jump on the back. Eric gets on the front rack, and Donna is the driver. We set out. 
Now, where we live, we don't have to go very far, maybe about an hour to what we call the gully hole. I have no idea where the name came from, but it was a sandy river bank with a little pond of water that the river had created. Honestly, it's quite beautiful and peaceful there, but in order to get there, we have to ride one hour beside the train tracks. Did we care at the time? No way. It was our favorite spot to fish. We get there and set up our poles. Everything is going great. But me, getting impatient, gets up and starts collecting seashells. I wade in the river away from Donna and Eric. All my attention is in the water, looking down in the sand to find odd shells. Without knowing it, I get pretty far away from them, and when I look up to the other side of the river, I see something. Whatever I'm looking at is on two legs, walking like a man, but it's hairy like a bear. I couldn't quite make it out because it kept to the shadows and behind the trees. Then I feel a hand on my shoulder, sending me ten feet into the air with fright, but I don't scream. It's Eric, and he must have seen this thing for him to have come to where I was. We stare at this thing for a while. I ask him, what does he think it could be? And he shakes his head and tells me he doesn't know. This thing must have been getting impatient because it started to throw rocks at us. Oh, that's a Bigfoot. <laughs> They're known for that, if you guys don't know. Um, there was no way the rocks could hit us being all the way across the river, but it clearly wanted us to go away. My brother gets the idea that maybe we should back up and go back up the shore a little ways. I agree. We make our way back, but we don't take our eyes off this thing. No sooner do we make it back to where Donna is, and this thing comes out. It comes out to the river bank, and we see it as clear as day. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Donna was in complete shock looking at this thing. It walks to the river bank bends down and starts to drink water. <laughs> it was like, look, I'm thirsty. You guys ain't leaving. I'm going to get a drink. <laughs> I look over at my brother, but he's gone. <laughs> oh, I start looking around for him. Then I find him a couple yards down the river, but he has his rifle aimed right at this thing. I panic and start running towards him. He's getting ready to shoot. When I jerk the gun away from him, causing him to miss his shot, the gun goes off and falls on the ground. You can hear the shot echoing around us, and I can see Erica's mad. I look toward where the creature was, but it's gone, and I feel relieved. Then we hear boom, boom, boom. Something was hitting something. We look around as this beating sound starts to slowly grow all around us boom 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 it was behind us in front of us beside us at this point i was scared without saying a word my brother picks up the gun and we hightail it back to donna where she had already started packing everything up it doesn't take long to throw everything back into the four-wheeler we get on and as we are turning around we hear something running in the woods all around us. I scream, go, 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 please, go, get me out of here. And at this point, I'm crying like a two-year-old. Donna throws the gas to the four-wheeler, nearly losing me. <laughs> and we go like a bat out of uh, heck <laughs> down the train tracks. We get home and we tell our grandma what happened. She sits all three of us down and tells us that it's quite an unbelievable story in that we probably saw a bear or mountain lion. I didn't know bears could throw rocks. <laughs> we look at each other in silence. We all three agree that if we go telling people about what we saw and saying it was a Bigfoot, <laughs> I told you it was a Bigfoot, that people would think we were crazy. So for years, this story hasn't been even spoken of until now. I know what we saw that day, and it was real. No matter what anyone says, Bigfoot is real, and I hope I never see him again. Wow, you could have been the first people to beg a Bigfoot. 
but if you had shot it, you probably would have ended up dead too because um, people go missing in the woods. You guys ever hear of Missing 411? Yeah, it's a book series. You should really check it out. Usually Bigfoot abducting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for those people that want to go Bigfoot hunting, they got friends. And they got pretty good aim with those rocks when they want to. Those were just warning chucks of rock. That's all I'm saying. I had one thrown at me once, I know. It was a boulder. It wasn't a rock. A freaking boulder. Whew. Anyways, moving on. It's a long story. Uh, <laughs> I have another paranormal point of a story for you guys. This one is called Creature of the Corn. This person states, my name is Drew, and this story takes place northwest Ohio last summer at my friend's house. Well, hold on. You know that last story with Bigfoot? Why didn't they describe more what the face looked like? He saw it clear as day. How tall was it? There was no detail. Whatever. Okay, moving on. Okay, <laughs> last summer at my friend's house, my friend named Cole had me over to hunt whatever had killed his chickens, which body parts were all over the yard so we set up camp and get ready to watch and see what had killed his chickens this is where you need to know the layout of where we set up camp we're at the corner of his property with corn behind us and on the sides of us and we we're also 15 feet away from his chicken coop we sit there quietly chatting and watching and then i hear this deep growl and my friend cole was talking at the time but i heard it I told him to shut up because I just heard a growl behind us. So we sit there in silence for a minute and then this time we both hear the growl. And it was so deep and loud. No animal that we knew sounded like that. So I instantly know that something is wrong. I tell him to run and we took off. As soon as we did, we heard crashing of the corn behind us. We make it to the deck of his house. I turn around. And the entire time, this animal thing was growling and making these noises extremely loud. So I see the corn moving, and you could tell where this creature creature was heading to. So I grab Cole's 20 gauge and fire off two quick shots. Then we hear this growl scream so loud, I had to cover my ears. And then the creature runs through the corn so fast, it was done in seconds. We did not go to sleep that night. The next morning, we went and looked at the corn, and there was a bunch of footprints and blood. Be careful what you hunt. Maybe something may be hunting you. Huh, there you go. Ah, huh, the Bigfoot. The Bigfoot. Who knows what that was, though. Growling and ripping apart chickens. Oh, no, it could have been a werewolf. <laughs> Whew, well... I have to thank you guys for listening to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Be sure to check out UFOHeadlineNews.com every single day. And tune into my other two shows, The Outlander on Fridays and The Kevin Cook Show on Tuesdays. Both are heard 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. And catch my paranormal comic strip, The Outlanders, at TheOutlandersComic.com. And you can find everything I mention and these stories that I read off here at InceptionRadioNetwork.com or HeidiHollis.com. And if you've experienced something out of the ordinary and want some level-headed advice, or if you've seen a UFO and want to share, be sure to write me at my website, HeidiHollis.com or UHN at InceptionRadioNetwork.com. Remember always to keep an open mind so you can stay informed and inspired. <laughs>